Hi, I want to introduce you to the idea of t-scores, which are a variety of z-scores, and then I want to talk about normalized weighted averages, and we'll use t-scores as an example. Now, since z-scores are always small numbers, typically just decimals, maybe one or two above or below uh, zero, um, a lot of times we want to transform into to numbers that are more like in the zero to a hundred range that we're, we're used to for evaluating things. And so z-scores are, we can transform z-scores into t-scores where instead of having an average of zero like a z does, a t-score has an average of 50 and the standard deviation is 10. So 50 would mean average, 60 would mean one standard deviation above average, so that's really good, and 70 is two standard deviations ab above uh, the mean, which is excellent. And likewise, 40 would be one standard deviation below the mean, not very good, and 30 would be a disaster, that would be two standard deviations be below the mean. So the formula that we can use for t-scores is the t-score equals 50 plus 10 times the z-score. So for example, for a z-score of 1, that would be 50 plus 1 times 10, that would give us a t of 60. For z of 0, which is average, that would be 50 plus 0 times 10, that would give a t of 50. For a, a z of minus 0.5, we would do 50 plus minus 0.5 times 10, and that would give us 45. So that's how we go from a, a, t, a Z score to a T score. And it's a, more of a convenient way because we can use whole numbers rather than decimals to describe uh, uh, people's uh, scores. Now there's other transformed, transformed scores that are of this type also. An IQ score is 100 plus 16 times Z or sometimes it's 15 times Z because there's two different systems of scoring uh, uh, IQ. So that means if you have an IQ of 115, that means you're one standard deviation above the mean. If you have an IQ of 130, that means you're two standard deviations above the mean. And if you have an IQ of 85, which you probably don't if you're watching this video, uh, you would have 85 is one standard deviation below 100. So that would be um, using this 15 point, uh, 15, uh, uh, point 15 sta using the standard deviation of 15, 85 would correspond to one standard deviation below uh, uh, one standard deviation below uh, average. And another type of standardized score are the type of score that are usually used for the SAT or the GREs and it's called an SAT type score, and that's 500 plus 100 times the Z. So 500 is the typical SAT score um, in a domain. 600 would one, be 100 standard, 100 would, 600 would be one standard deviation above the mean. Now let's look at an example where we could use T scores. Let's look at how we might be able to use t-scores in some normalized weighted averages. When would we want to use normalized weighted averages? Let's, let's say we've got three candidates, Winnie, Piglet, and Eeyore, and we've got three sets of scores for each candidate. The interview has been scored on a scale of 1 to 10, the resume has been scored on a scale of 1 to 20, and the cover letter has been scored on a scale of 1 to 100. Now, if we were to take a weighted average of these, there's so much more prime, more variability in the cover letter that it would dominate the, uh, the weightings, even if we wanted it to be very small. So what we need to do is rather than instead of using the raw scores, we need to use standardized scores. We need to use Z scores or some other form of the standardized scores to give us a more accurate picture since uh, they will all have the same mean and, and variance, or the same mean and the standard deviation. So with the z-scores, the mean would all be zero and the standard deviation would be one. With t-scores, the mean would be 50 and the standard deviation would be 10. So let's suppose we've already converted the raw scores into z-scores. 
And we can see that Winnie did very well on the interview. He was almost one standard deviation above. Piglet did average, and Eeyore was a disaster. On the resume, Winnie did very well, and so did Piglet. Eeyore didn't do very well on the resume. However, on the cover letter, both Winnie and Piglet didn't do very well, but Eeyore had a pretty classy uh, cover letter. He had Al proofread it for him. So we've got some weights here. We want the interview and the resume to count for about 40% and the cover letter for 0.2. And now let's, let's convert these to T-scores before we do the weighted average. So I'm going to put for Winnie, Let's calculate a, a T-score for Winnie. The formula that we're going to use is equal 50. Then I'm going to do plus, And then Winnie's Z-score is F18. F18. I'm going to times that by 10. And I will press Enter. And it has a Z-score of 59.09. And I want to calculate that for everybody, so or for all of his elements. So his resume had a z-score of 60, and his cover letter had 50, uh, 48, so because it was below average. Now let's do the same thing for Piglet. Now I think we can just drag this over. I think we can do that for Eeyore and all the way down here too. And let's. Let's see, well, there, I we've got T-scores for them, and let's continue dragging it down. And now we've got T-scores for everybody. So Eeyores are below 50, except for his cover letter, because that's the only thing he did above average in. So now we've got T-scores for all of Winnie and uh, Piglet and Eeyore. Now, let's calculate the total weighted average. So let's calculate the total weight first. Total weight. I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to say that's going to be equal to uh, the sum of E25, E25 dot dot E27. Those three numbers. So we've got a total weight of one, 100%. That's what we wanted. And now we're going to have the uh, um, the weighted average for Winnie, and we're going to use the sum product. So we're going to use equals sum product, open parentheses. And now the weight we don't want we want to change. We don't want it to change. So I'm going to do dollar e dollar 25 dot dot dollar e dollar 27 and that will be the first way and we will multiply that by f 25 dot dot f 27 when he scores and we'll do the close parentheses and then we'll divide it by the total weight. So that'll be shift dollar E E dollar twenty eight. And uh, so we're dividing by one. So that's really not doing much, but we're we're putting it in because that's part of the pop the problem. And Winnie has a total weighted average of 57.24. So I am going to drag that over and calculate it for Piglet and Eeyore. Piglet has 53.7 and Eeyore has 39.79. So it looks like Winnie is the best candidate. Oops. So that's uh, um, uh, how we can uh, calculate these uh, um, weighted uh, uh, weighted means.